Monday. If you're watching this on the first day it airs, it's October 10th, 2021. And if you watch it after that, I hope whatever day it is, you're having a great day. Now, my question of the day for you is, what do you think is better than anyone or anything else? Maybe soccer or cupcakes or ice cream. But I think we are going to learn what the Bible says. We are gonna learn what the Bible says is better than anyone or anything else. All right, everybody, let's change our green screen. Ready? Oh, what a nice background. All right, everyone, let's say a prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this time that we can be together to learn your word. Thank you so much that you make our hearts brand new because you love us. Thank you that you rescue us from sin and death. Thank you that Jesus died on the cross and rose again for the sins of the whole world. Jesus, thank you that we are a part of your family. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right, everybody, now it's time to review our scripture memory verse. This is the last time that we are gonna do John 16, 33. So if you've been watching our videos, this is so familiar to you, but maybe if it's your first video, don't worry, you'll catch on. First, let's read it all together. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Let's review our emotions. We say, I have said these things to you. Yeah, can we try that? I have said these things to you that in me, in Jesus, you may have peace. So we do the sign language for Jesus and then the sign language for peace. In the world, you will have tribulation Remember that big word tribulation, it means troubles, yeah? So Jesus is saying, in the world, you will have troubles. It's just gonna happen. Maybe you've had a trouble recently. Maybe you have caught a cold, or maybe they were out of your favorite cereal at the grocery store. Or maybe one of your friends isn't really talking to you right now. Or maybe there's another tribulation you have in your life. Jesus knows when we go through a tribulation he knows how hard it is. So that's why he says, but take heart. Even though these tribulations are hard, Jesus wants us to take heart. He says, for I have overcome the world. Jesus, when he died on the cross for our sins and rose again, he, even though we go through hard times, he is bigger than the hard stuff that happens to us. And the hard stuff is hard, yeah? But when we go through the hard stuff, we know we will not be alone. And Jesus always promises to be with us. So let's do this verse together one more time. It's the last time we're gonna do it in our videos because next week there'll be a new one. On your marks, get set. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Oh, I hope you guys remember that one forever and ever and ever, because it's a really good one. Now it is time for us to learn our lesson. We are gonna be in the book of Colossians. It's in the New Testament, and it is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in a town called Colossae. The people there were called Colossians. It's kind of a hard name to pronounce. Can you pronounce it, Colossians? Yeah? So, I don't know if you remember, but Paul loved to write letters to the churches. Yeah, he would go to places, he would preach the gospel, and new churches would form. And then Paul would write them letters. They didn't have email, they didn't have telephones, but Paul wanted to write. And he wanted to see how the churches were doing. 
Now the people in the Colossian church loved Jesus, but there was a little tiny problem. There were some people in Colossae that were telling the Christians there that they had a secret gospel, that they knew stuff about Jesus that nobody else knew. They were lying to the church in Colossae. And remember, these people knew about Jesus. But the thing about learning is that we're always learning more and more and more. Like let's say I was in school and I had just learned my multiplication tables. And I knew that two times one was two, and two times two was four, and two times three was six, and so on. But then somebody came to me and said, Julia, did you know that two times two is actually five? And I would say, no, 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 it's four. I've learned it's four. And they would say, no, no, it's five. If I had just learned it, could you imagine that could be confusing in my brain? Yeah? And so that's why Paul wanted to write the Colossian church because he wanted to say, don't be confused. Don't listen to these people. They are wrong. Just like if someone told you that two times two was five, they would be wrong. Yeah? Because with a lot of things in life, there's a right and there's a wrong. In some things there's not, like what's your favorite color? Some people's favorite color is yellow, some people's rainbow, some people's blue. So in some things there's not a right or a wrong, but in some things there is. Like two times two is four. And like Jesus is our savior and there aren't special people with a special gospel. Yeah? So if you're in the book of Colossians, turn to Colossians chapter one. We are going to review some of the things that Paul reminded the believers of. Because remember, Paul had gone there and he had said, Jesus is the truth. Jesus is our savior. And so Paul wanted to take time in this letter to remind these people about the truth about Jesus so they could understand that some of the things they had been hearing were not true and they could be confident in what Paul was telling them about Jesus. Now, one of the things Paul told the believers was in Colossians chapter one, verse 15. It's a little complicated, so we'll get to it. Let's read it together. It says, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. So this verse, Paul is telling the believers, you guys, Jesus has always been God. Remember how we believe in the Trinity? One God, three persons. We have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. If that's a new concept for you, what we believe as Christians is we believe there is one true God, but he has three special parts yeah we talk about god the father and then we talk about jesus who's the son of god and we talk about the holy spirit but they're all one true god and so paul was reminding the christians that that jesus is the image of the invisible god meaning like we learn earlier in the bible that no one has seen God because he's so holy and none of us could take it. He's like too awesome, too incredible for any of us to see. But Jesus is the image. An image means like the thing you can see of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Jesus has always been there. He made everything. He is with God. He is God. Yeah. He can be Jesus, the son and he can be God. He can be both. Now you might be saying, Julia, that doesn't make any sense. That is confusing. There are some things, I have to tell you guys this. There are some things in the Bible that are so hard to understand 
and that's okay. I'm 30. I am three zero years old. And sometimes when I learn about the Trinity, I get confused. And I think I don't fully understand it, but that's okay. God knows who he is and he tells us who he is. And how can we learn who God is? Where can we learn that? In the Bible. So I share all that with you because I want us to know that there's a lot of things about God that we will not understand because God is so big and so amazing and that's okay. So when we talk about things like the Trinity, if you find yourself saying, I just don't get it, don't worry, you're not alone. Ask questions and pray and ask God to help you. Anyway, I'm getting away from the verse talking about the Trinity, which I love. We learned in Colossians 1.15 that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So Paul wrote that to the church in Colossae to help them to remember the truth that they knew about Jesus. Let's see what else the Bible tells us. Colossians 1.17 and the first part of 18 says, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. When this verse says that in him all things hold together, that's like saying Jesus is in charge of everything. Yeah, we never need to worry or be scared because in him all things hold together. And when it says that he is the head of the body, the church, I don't know if you've noticed this, but in the Bible, sometimes there are some really great comparisons. Yeah? And one thing the church is compared to is like a body. And in the Bible, it says that the body, the church, has many members. So just like on each of our bodies, a lot of us have hair and a lot of us have eyeballs and a lot of us have noses. All of us have hearts and brains. The church is like that. Everyone in the church is different. Like my brain is different than my nose or my freckles, right? But every member of the church, even though they're different from each other, like maybe you love math, but I love reading, right? Even though we're different, we're still a part of the same church that Jesus is the head of. And so this verse, Paul's just reminding the Colossians, hey, Jesus is in charge of everything. He loves you and he is the head of the church, which is so cool. You know, with Jesus being the head of the church, we can remember that he is in charge of everything. If you turn ahead to Colossians chapter two, there's another verse I wanna talk about. Colossians two verse six says, therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So Paul is just reminding the Christians in Colossae that because we love Jesus and we know what Jesus did for us, we want to walk in him. And that's just a fancy way of saying, hey, think thoughts and speak words and have behavior that show that you love Jesus, right? Jesus changes everything. Jesus is better than anyone or anything else. And so, because we know how much Jesus loves us, we want to live our lives in ways that make that so clear, right? Like Jesus loves you. Jesus knows you. Jesus honestly just would do anything for you. That's why he came to earth to die on the cross for our sins. He didn't have to do that. But see, our sin separates us from God. Yeah, even little tiny sins, even big sins, each sin separates us from God. And Jesus thought, you know what? 
no, I don't want to be separated. I don't like that separation. And that's why he came to earth and he chose to die on the cross for our sins. Because in order to be reconciled to God, that means to get to come back to God, there has to be a payment for sin. Just like when you go to the store, apples cost money, right? Or doing your homework takes time. Sin, you can't pay with with time. You can't pay for sin with money. The only way to pay for sin is by a sacrifice. And Jesus said, you know what? I will be the sacrifice. And he allowed himself to die so that he could rise again. He defeated sin and death. And when you love Jesus, when you know Jesus, the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, it takes, it wipes our sin away. And we can be reconciled to God. So that's why Paul wanted to encourage these Christians in Colossae. And he wanted them to make sure he said, Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, you know, believing that he's their savior, so walk in him. Paul was saying, you guys know this stuff is true. So let's all together have behaviors and thoughts and words that show that we love Jesus. And you guys, that makes me really happy. The next verse I want to read to you, it's all stuff you guys know, but like it's kind of fun to review. If you flip ahead to Colossians 3, verse 12, it says, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one of you has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So you guys, Paul is just giving the Christians really good advice. Just like in the winter time, you put on your clothes and your hat and your coats and your gloves. You put on clothes for your body Paul is saying to put on stuff in our behavior and in our heart. He's giving us great advice. You know, because of Jesus, we can put on compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, patience, and love. And when we can add those things to our behavior and the things we do in our life, come from our love of Jesus and what he's done for us, and we have all of these things, we will have a brand new life. I don't know about you, but that sounds really good to me. Because when I can trust Jesus, and I can know who he is and what he's done for me, it helps me to be less sad, or less grumpy, or less jealous, or like, Let's say I study really hard for my multiplication test and I still forget some multiplication tables. I can think, you know what, it's okay. Jesus loves me. I don't have to be perfect, right? Jesus gives us freedom in our hearts and the natural behaviors we have may be grumpy or I wanna be perfect. Jesus says, I'll take that away and I will give you a new heart of love right? It's only because of Jesus that we can have changed hearts. And I'm so thankful because Jesus is better than anything or anyone else. Nothing else in your whole life can give you a new heart except for Jesus. And so a lot of you have probably already experienced that. Maybe you know that Jesus is your savior, but if you're not sure, if you think, I don't know, I don't know if Jesus is my savior, Miss Julia, that's okay. I would say, make sure to always ask grown-ups questions, trusted grown-ups, like your mom and dad, or me, or, or other church teachers. Ask us questions about Jesus, and pray, and read your Bible. 
And even if you don't know if Jesus is your savior or not, you should still pray and read your Bible because those are the ways you can get to know Jesus better and better. And someday you'll realize, oh, Jesus is my savior. And you will feel like you have a brand new heart because the Holy Spirit will live in your heart. And you'll know with everything in you that Jesus is better than anything or anyone else. You know, I love getting to talk about Jesus with you guys. And I think this lesson of Paul writing the letter to the church in Colossae is a really important reminder to us that we always need to be watchful and think about what we know is true. Because remember, those people weren't always hearing the truth. Jesus says in the book of John, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Remember when Paul wrote this letter to the church in Colossae, to these Colossian people, they were hearing some things that were not true. And Paul reminded them exactly what Jesus taught us and what Jesus did for us. And so in our lives, the same thing holds true. The truth of Jesus will set us free in our hearts. And so to remind ourselves of the truth, we can pray and read our Bible. We can spend time with other Christians and we can ask questions and we can learn and we can grow. Jesus will never change. Your whole life, my whole life, your grandma's life. Jesus has been the same yesterday and today and forever. Like I told you guys earlier, I'm 30. Jesus has been the same my whole life. He's been the same for my mom's whole life and my grandma's whole life. Ever, forever and ever, God has been the same. And God will not change. And so no matter where we go in our lives, no matter what happens in our lives, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he loves you and he is your savior. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I praise you for this lesson. Thank you that this lesson is all about how you are the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus, thank you that you paid the price for our sin with your life. You sacrificed yourself for us. And please help us to know what that means and help us to rejoice that we are reconciled to God. Lord, we're going to have questions in our life. We're going to ask questions about the Trinity or how you have always been the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God, help us to know that it's good to have questions, but there are some things so magnificent that we might not understand them right away, and that's okay. Jesus, I thank you for the friends who are watching and listening to this. And I thank you that you are so good to us that you want us to know the truth about you. You don't hide the truth from us. You make the truth available for everybody. And so I pray that everyone listening to this would accept you as their Lord and Savior and they would know your great love for them. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great job, everybody. Oh, I loved this lesson. Jesus is better than anything or anyone else, and he loves you. I'll see you next time. Bye.